Hello friends. This is Fanfic Adventure. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto Uzumaki become the powerful Olympian's god? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video. Percy scowled up at the titan in Luke's body. He was in the throne room again. He'd been here before to send a message to his father, Poseidon. Kronos had disarmed him, knocked him down, and was holding the point of his sword, backbiter, at his throat. They were both staring at the viewing screen that showed Typhon, the bane of Olympus, approaching, the gods trying vainly to stop it. Please, it has to happen now, Percy thought. As the giant's foot sunk into the Hudson River, the sound of conch horn rang out. All around Typhon, the Hudson exploded, churning with forty-foot waves. A new chariot, a blue one, flew out of the river and around the giant's legs. A dozen cyclops, leading them Tyson, stood up and threw enormous chains around Typhon, slowly pulling him down. Now, my brethren, strike for Olympus, came the enormous voice of Poseidon, the sea god, and the young half-blood saw that he looked young and strong, nothing like the old man Percy had seen at the bottom of the ocean. However, Kronos merely grinned and walked outside the throne room, before throwing his sword towards the cyclops. Percy saw on the image that the sword sliced through half of the cyclops holding the chains, making them crumble into dust. No no. The gods all cursed as they saw the cyclops cut down. The remaining ones were pulled free as Typhon roared and grabbed them all, before throwing them at the sea chariot. Poseidon gritted his teeth as he saw half of his children vaporize, while he was forced to dodge the second half. Some rescue, Poseidon. Zeus shouted at him, at least I tried, Zeus, he yelled back. Enough. Now is not the time for this, Athena said to both of them. We have to finish him now. Once he joins up with Kronos, they'll both be too strong for us to beat. It's too late for that, came a voice they all knew and hated. My power grows, soon I shall be stronger than all of you. Curses, Zeus said. Kronos is getting ready to assume his true form. We have to stop Typhon now. They all turned to the giant, getting their weapons ready, when another voice spoke out. You know, you could always ask for help. They spun around, pointing their weapons, to see a figure floating in the air behind them. His arms were crossed and he wore a black hooded cloak that covered his body and shadowed his face. Who are you? Zeus growled. Someone can see how bad this battle is going. If Typhon and Kronos join up, both of them will be more powerful for it. But, if you want me to help, just say please. We don't need help, Poseidon said. The figure's head edged to the side. Cause you've done such a fantastic job of keeping everything together so far, right? He said, causing the gods to grit their collective teeth. Just ask. Two little words. That's all it is. Otherwise, you will watch as your civilization falls. What could you possibly do? Athena shouted. We are the gods, there is no power greater than us. Really? Seems to me like you're getting your asses handed to you by this giant mofo. And as a matter of fact, I'm stronger than all of you combined. You lie. No I don't. And I can prove it. He drifted forward, before rolling up his sleeve to reveal his hand, which he pointed at the giant's chest. Shinra Tensai, he said. For a second, nothing happened. Then the gods saw something they thought was impossible. Typhon was lifted off his feet. The enormous monster roared in pain as a ridiculously powerful force hit him in the chest, knocking him backwards. He flew for several miles, which may have seemed inconsequential for his bulk, but was still huge for most everything else. The Olympians stared. Then slowly, they turned back towards the mysterious figure. He crossed his arms and snorted. Believe me now? They all nodded mutely. Good, he said, because now, I'm going to go take care of Kronos. Try not to let Typhon past, will you? And he blurred from their sight. Kronos and Percy both stared at the image in fury and amazement, respectively. To see Typhon pushed back, even a little bit, was an amazing achievement, even for the gods. What happened? Kronos raged. The gods couldn't have done that, they're not strong enough. They're not, but I am, said a voice from behind them and they turned to see a hooded and cloaked figure standing behind them, arms crossed. Then he shook his head. Honestly, why do all the titans and gods overestimate themselves so much? 
Who are you, stranger? Kronos said calmly. Do you have business with me? The figure raised a hand and picked his nose. Yeah, I'm kinda gonna have to stop you from destroying the mortal world. That's where I put all my stuff. Kronos dropped the calm act and let his fury shine through. You dare, he began, but was cut off when the person blurred from his sight and socked him in the jaw. Percy blinked in surprise as Kronos was thrown backwards from the force of the punch, something even gods had trouble with. Kronos stood up and called for his sword, which he promptly turned back into a scythe and then swung at the approaching figure with all his might. Imagine his shock when the figure simply put up a hand and caught it between his fingers with little effort. The person snorted, then Sparta kicked the titan in the chest, knocking him back again. You can't defeat me, Kronos shouted. Soon I shall reveal my true form and burn you to ashes. Good, I was hoping for a bit of a challenge before I go, the mysterious person said, his arms crossed. Then he held up a hand. But, before you do. He walked over to Percy, who was staring at the man in shock, and seized his collar, holding it high and walking out of the room. The half-blood immediately began struggling. What are you doing? Getting you out of here. Sorry kid, but just in case this fight turns ugly. I don't want you caught up in it. What are you gonna do? Throw you out. Let me go, asshole. Percy shouted, struggling wildly, but stopped when the man shook him hard. I could throw you out or drop kick you out, brat, stop complaining. With that, he reared back his arm, and threw the yelling demigod out of Olympus. Then he turned back to Kronos, whose form was flicking with golden light. He was about to assume his true godly form when the man seized both his arms. Kronos struggled wildly, but couldn't dislodge the person, then he realized something else. His energy was being drained. All of his power, his energy, was being siphoned off from his body like dust into a vacuum. He looked up at the grinning figure, who he finally caught sight of his face. Three whisker-like marks adorned his cheeks, giving him a somewhat feral appearance, while his eyes glowed purple and had a ripple-like pattern. His hair was golden blonde, while his longer-than-average canines pointed from his teeth as he gave a carefree grin. Yield, Kronos. Even if I couldn't drain your energy and you were at ten times your full power, I could still beat you, so just give up. Never, Kronos yelled, even as his power dropped, his form no longer flickering. Okay, fine. Then I guess you don't need any of your power then. The drain increased hugely, until Kronos felt as weak as any regular human. That should keep you down for a few thousand years, the man said lightly, before head-butting the titan lord hard, knocking him out, and pulling Kronos' scythe out of his grasp, giving it a twirl. There. Now let's make sure that the gods haven't screwed things up again, he said. The gods cursed as Typhon began to rise. They'd tried everything. They'd all attacked him at the same time. They'd all thrown their weapons at the giant's already hurt chest, but nothing seemed to work. Having trouble, said a voice from behind them, and they all turned to see the man from before floating behind their chariots, holding Kronos' scythe in his hand. You, what happened? Where's Kronos? Poseidon asked urgently. Down and out for the count. Asshole almost got to his full on rage mode form, but I knocked him out. The gods decided not to argue this seeing as how Typhon was standing up. You dare defy me, the giant roared, and brought a fist up to throw at the collection of chariots. Kronos' scythe turned into a sword, which the man promptly put onto his belt, then raised both his hands and made a strange hand sign. Rantan. Doshibori, storm release, skyfall, the man said. The gods stared as a storm cloud seemed to gather over Typhon, crackling with energy before a dozens of bolts of lightning began to rain down on the giant, forcing him to raise both his arms to defend himself. How are you using lightning? Zeus shouted. Lightning is my weapon. You can't possibly wield it. Less questioning, more helping, the man said back. I'm gonna try something, so all of you have to keep him occupied. For how long? Athena asked. Thirty seconds. That's how long it'll take me to recharge my batteries. The gods didn't ask what he meant, but instead turned to the giant who was recovering from the dozens of blasts, he only looked angrier than ever. I will destroy you all, none shall deny me my vengeance, Typhon roared. The roar turned into a strangled gulp when Artemis shot a dozen arrows down his throat. Blaring down, Typhon raised a massive hand and swatted downwards towards her chariot. 
Artemis! Athena shouted, trying to get to her sister, but there was no time, as the giant's hand impacted on the chariot, sending it to the ground. Sister, Apollo yelled, glaring at Typhon with hatred. Oi, instead of acting all pissy, could you actually do something to stop him next time? The man said from behind them, and they turned to see Artemis, unconscious. She had reverted to her preferred form of a young girl and was held bridal style in the man's arms. He threw her upwards a little, but before any of them could complain, the man made another hand sign. Cage Bushin no Jutsu, he said, and another figure appeared next to him and promptly caught the goddess, before flying away with her. What are you doing? If you're going to hurt her, Apollo threatened, but was cut off. If I was going to hurt her, I wouldn't have saved her, idiot, he said, and since you guys are doing such a fantastic job, I'll take over from here. I'll only need one technique for this. He raised his hands. Cage Bushin, he said, and six clones clones appeared behind him. You ready boys? He asked, and they all nodded affirmative. He held up a hand, and they all gathered around it. For a second, none of the gods could see what they were doing, until they all puffed into smoke, except the original. A small, glowing ball of energy was in his hand, different colors running through it. Five Genso Hoshutsu. Rasengan. Five Element Release. Rasengan, he said. The ball began to expand, until it was nearly the size of a house, still spinning rapidly. Eat this, the man said calmly, and threw it at Typhon's chest. As it impacted, the ball expanded again, and the giant roared as it was hit by balls of fire, streaks of lightning, bits of earth, bullets of air and waves of water, all centered around the spinning ball. The gods all stared, dumbstruck, as Typhon, the bane of Olympus, began to dissolve. No, I can't be beaten, you shall all die for this, the giant roared, even as his body was disappearing. Ah, shut up, you big baby, the man shouted up at him. Honestly, you can get so annoying after a while. Typhon continued to roar, until finally, he was nothing, gone. Phew, I haven't had this much excitement in millennia, the man said, a happy tone in his voice. Who are you? Apollo said with some awe. The figure turned his head to the sun god. My name is Naruto Uzumaki, he said, pulling off his hood to reveal his face, and we need to have a talk. It was a little while later that all the gods found themselves in the throne room, the seat of their power. Most of the demigods who had fought were in there with them, wondering who the hooded stranger was. Hades had shown up a little while ago with an army of undead and had quickly routed the remainder of Kronos' forces. Said Titan, still in Luke's body, was thrashing on the ground, shouting curses, as he was held by dozens of chains that blocked most of his movement. Naruto, meanwhile, was holding Artemis in his arms, as she was still unconscious from Typhon's blow, while the other Olympians, particularly Apollo, glared at him. As the moon goddess woke up, she found herself encircled by two strong arms, holding her easily, not fully awake, she settled herself into a more comfortable position, shifting slightly to press herself against the warm chest. Most of the occupants in the room raised an eyebrow when the moon goddess started to get cuddly, with a man no less. Artemis' dislike for men was well known, so to see her snuggling into one's arms was somewhat disconcerting. Give her to me, Apollo said, frowning in his fifteen feet high form. Normally, that would have looked frightening, having a god loom over someone, but the man merely raised an eyebrow. All right, fine, he said, I have to go do something anyway. He handed Artemis over to Apollo, who reduced in size to be able to carry his sister, then stepped outside, walking past the demigods who were wondering what he was doing. Naruto walked down the steps of Olympus, heading for one specific area. A garden that was being used as a makeshift morgue, where all the demigods who had fallen during battle were resting. He was looking for one, specifically. The body of Selina Beauregard, wrapped in a hot pink shroud embroidered with an electric spear. She was the only one left, as all the others had been burned. Clarice LaRue, daughter of Ares, was sitting silently, grieving for her friend. Her head lifted at the stranger who approached, and she wiped her cheeks hurriedly, removing all traces of her tears. The stranger wasn't interested in that though. With a single move, he kneeled down, pulled out a strange knife and slit the shroud down the middle, revealing the pale body of the once beautiful girl. Her face had been mangled by dracon poison and the stranger examined her, turning his head to the side inquisitively. 
What the hell are you doing? Clarice demanded, drawing her sword and pointing it at the hooded stranger, who didn't move and didn't answer. He lifted a hand and swung it down slightly. Suddenly, her sword was ripped from her grasp by an unseen force, clattering to the ground. That didn't reduce her anger one bit, but it did give her some warning to not point weapons at the man. Other demigods had been drawn by her shout, and were wondering what was going. Several of the gods were also approaching. They all gathered around to see Selena's body being disturbed, and angry murmurs soon began to run through the crowd. No one angrier than the goddess of love herself. What are you doing to my daughter? She asked, her voice deathly cold. Most of the occupants of the courtyard shivered. When Aphrodite was angry, she'd been known to tear men's nuts off. He didn't answer. Naruto looked behind him, his face hidden by the cowl of his cloak, and his eyes narrowed. A puff of smoke issued next to him, and an identical, cloaked figure appeared, looking at the crowd. Make sure no one interferes, he said, and his clone nodded. Got it, boss, he said, and crossed his arms, his stance giving a clear message, no one passes. Naruto's hand descended to right above Selena's face and started to glow green. Everyone stared in amazement as the wounds, caused by the poison of the dracon, began to recede, until Selena was just as beautiful as before. His hands descended lower, to near her throat, and from her mouth issued a stream of liquid, green and smoking, that gathered in between Naruto's hands, suspended by his chakra. He drew in a breath and a stream of fire issued from his mouth and incinerated the poison, causing several gasps from the crowd. Phew, that should do it, he said to himself, and turned away from the crowd for a second. Do what? Aphrodite hissed. Why are you disturbing my daughter's remains, you monster? Naruto stiffened slightly, before relaxing again. Haven't been called that in a while. Forgot what it feels like, he said, before throwing off his hood, showing his face for the first time to many people. Many of the girls, despite the situation, blushed. Naruto, for his part, cracked his neck and sat down, next to Selena's body, facing the crowd, before sighing. Here goes, he said. He put his hands together in another seal, and smiled painfully. Outer path. Samsara of heavenly life technique, he said, and immediately stiffened. For a few seconds, nothing happened, but then, Naruto began to age. All of the occupants were stunned as the blonde aged before their eyes, lines adding to his face, his hair growing silvery white. He shook with strain, and blood began to drip out of his nose, but still he kept going. What are you doing? Stop it, Clarice said, walking over and trying to get at him, but the clone stood in front. Wait, he hissed, and the daughter of Ares saw that he was aging too. Why? You guys are killing yourselves, she said. We'll be fine, but if you interrupt now, you might destroy any chance of this being a success. What are you doing? The clone smiled. You'll see, he said. With a final, shattering gasp, Naruto finished, pulling away from Selena's body and drawing heaving breaths. Clarice having been let go as the clone puffed into smoke, rushed to his side. Gah, I hate using that, especially with shadow clones, he said. He seemed to be growing younger again, but still appeared to be in his late fifties. I used to be so much better at this crap. What the hell did you just do? She asked, and he grinned tiredly. You'll see. He pulled himself upwards, kneeling at Selena's side, and placed his thumb and forefinger on her brow, near her temples. Now will you finally show us why you are desecrating my daughter's body? Aphrodite asked savagely, and he looked up at her. Sure, he said, and his body seemed to glow for a second, before he pulled his hand away. Most of the people in the garden nearly had a heart attack when Selena Beauregard sat up, gasping, and very much alive. Hey, hey, take it easy, Naruto said as she looked at him with wild eyes. What? Where? she asked and the blonde grabbed her by the shoulders and forced her to look at him. Take a deep breath, and relax, he said slowly, and she nodded slightly, calming down a little. As the rest of the crowd tried to get their jaws working again, Naruto slowly helped the girl to her feet, easing her up and whispering soothing words into her ear. He looked up at Aphrodite, whose brain had fried trying to process exactly what had happened. S. Selena, she said tentatively, afraid it was an illusion a cruel trick to get her hopes up. Selena looked up for the first time and recognized her mother. M. Mom? 
she asked, and walked forward slowly. They embraced, both crying, as most of the crowd looked at the emotional scene. Naruto was left standing a little bit off to the side, a slight smile on his lips. Clarice came up behind him and looked at him with awe. Did you just bring her back to life? She asked. He turned around to look at her. Yep. The daughter of Ares nodded, stunned, and, how, did you bring her back to life? Trade secret, he said, he was about to say something else, but was interrupted when Aphrodite embraced him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, she said, thank you for bringing her back. Uh, sure, he replied. My pleasure. Wait, Selena said. If you brought me back, could you do it with someone else? He looked at her and raised an eyebrow as he and Aphrodite separated. Depends. Why? My friend, Charlie, he died a little while ago. Do you think that you could bring him back to life? How did he die? Naruto asked, and Selena broke off, not expecting that question. He blew up in an explosion. Then, no, I can't. What? She asked, stunned. Why not? He sighed. The body of a person needs to be intact for me to bring them back to life. That's why I had to take the dracon poison out of your system. If he was blown up, then he's gone. Which, incidentally, is part of why I brought you back. Everyone was paying rapt attention to the man as he sighed and scratched the back of his head. This is gonna be kind of an awkward question, but you were Kronos' spy, right? He asked, and everyone blinked as they remembered. In all the excitement of Selena's resurrection, in truth, they had forgotten. Now people started to look at the girl with more than a few distrustful looks. W. Well, yes, but that's not important right now, Aphrodite said, drawing closer to her daughter, as if to shield her from all the distrust. Of course it's not. I don't know about the others here, but I certainly don't care that you were a spy, he said, speaking directly to Selena, who nodded silently. But the fact of the matter is, no matter your actions when you arrived in Manhattan, you were still a spy before that. The judges of the dead will still consider you a traitor, so if I had let you go to the underworld, you most likely would have been put in the fields of punishment. Most people shuddered at the thought, then realized exactly how much the man had helped the young half-blood. And speaking of which, he continued, I need to have a talk with all the gods, you included. Aphrodite blinked as the mysterious man turned away and walked back up the steps. Naruto sighed as he re-entered the god's throne room, drawing several glances from the still huge occupants of the room. Most of the gods raised an eyebrow at the small crowd that followed him through the doors. Artemis, who had woken up, looked with interest at the man who had saved her. The blonde raised a hand, and tree roots split the marble floor and formed a table, around which fourteen chairs appeared. He took one, and looked up at the tall forms who were staring in amazement at their new table. Sit down. We need to talk. We're fine on our thrones, Zeus said belligerently. Naruto's eyes narrowed. I'm sorry, did I give you the impression that I was asking? The gods all stirred angrily at his words. How dare you speak to us like that, Hades growled. You are a mere mortal. You should bow at our feet. Oh, piss off, Naruto snapped, causing many jaws to drop. I've had enough of your attitude. And actually, I'm immortal, so put that in your pipe and smoke it. Many of the gods in the room were flickering with light, about to attain their true godly forms, as they grit their teeth in anger. But something in Naruto's eyes gave them pause, something that said that he was supremely unworried by the prospect of being attacked by gods. One by one, they all descended to normal human size, still glowering at the blonde, and took their seats. Thank you, he said courteously, then looked at the empty spot. Hestia, you come too. Said goddess who was still in her form of a young girl, looked up from her hearth and stared in confusion at the blonde. I'm not on the council of the gods anymore, she said quietly. And, Naruto asked, she blinked, um, well, she began, but honestly couldn't come up with an answer. Hestia is not welcome, Zeus said, causing said goddess to look down. If you have business, it shall be with us. Hestia is welcome, Naruto returned glaring at the king of the gods. Because unlike you, I actually care about what other people think. He turned back to the goddess of the hearth, and gestured to the seat, smiling. She walked forward and sat down rather awkwardly. Okay, Naruto said, crossing his arms. This court is now in session. Court? 
Poseidon asked. You are all going to be judged, the blonde, no trace of his former smile remaining. And if I find you guilty, punished. The gods stirred in confusion and anger. What gives you the right to judge us? Athena asked, more out of actual curiosity than anger. At this, Naruto's eyes narrowed. It's high time somebody did. I gotta say, the gods have done a wonderful job of ing up my world, he said. Your world? Artemis asked. This world is ours, Zeus snarled. It belongs to us. Actually, this world is currently under my jurisdiction, the blonde said, especially since I'm the one who created it. Everyone blinked. You lie, Hades growled. Only with ladies, Naruto said, smirking, causing several goddesses to blush. And anyway, I'm gonna be judging you guys now. He turned to the Lord of the Dead. Let's start with you, he began. Let's get a list of your meritorious achievements. Not much, besides kidnapping Persephone. Seriously? I mean, you just up and kidnap someone to be your wife? What the hell, man? That's just creepy. Don't change the subject, Hades said, though he looked distinctly uncomfortable. Most of the goddesses in the room were glaring at the Lord of the Dead, especially Demeter. Finally, someone tells him off for that, she said. Naruto gave a faint smile, then turned to Poseidon. Poseidon. You, actually, are one of the ones that I have the least problems with. You seem a decent enough guy, though you are still partly to blame for all this. The god of the sea was about to question him on that, but the blonde turned to Zeus before he could. And you, he said, glaring at the lord of the sky. You are one of my least favorite gods. The head honcho, the big man upstairs, the idiot who almost screwed everything up. The last word caused Zeus to glower at him, sparking dangerously. You dare, shut it, Naruto said, returning Zeus glare with one of his own. The gods are the reason that this entire world almost ended, and the blame for that falls almost entirely on you. That's enough, Zeus shouted, standing up violently, throwing his chair back. I will not sit here and be accused of this. Yes you will, sit down, Naruto said calmly. His unflustered attitude only infuriated the god more. Enough, he said. This is completely ridiculous. I'm leaving. I said. Naruto began, his eyes becoming red and slitted. Sit. Down. Everyone in the room gulped slightly as the blonde's voice became deep and angry, almost demonic. Even the king of the gods, who wasn't intimidated easily, paused at the man's words. He wordlessly took his seat again, not showing the apprehension he felt. Naruto subsided, palming his face with a sigh. Poseidon, Apollo, Artemis, Hermes, Athena, Demeter, Aphrodite, Hestia and Hephaestus. Those are the gods whom I have no problem with. Ares is an idiot who almost caused a war just because he felt like it. Hades is a bit of a creep, but not too bad of a guy, considering that he's been an outcast since the Titanomachy. Hera is a bit cruel, but okay. Zeus is the one that I'm most pissed off at. You can't talk about my queen like that, the king of the gods said angrily, while Hera was still trying to process how insulted she felt. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Zeus' words. Oh, cause you've been doing so much better. Sleeping with mortals since you were born. If I had a wife, I wouldn't just cheat on her. I would rather die before doing that. Hera is a much better person than you deserve. Zeus grit his teeth as Hera blinked in surprise. First he insults her. Then he defends her. Several other goddesses looked at the man with new interest as he sighed again. Both of you have been screwing with mortals since you were born, Zeus with ladies, Hera with Zeus' children. I'm not saying that the other gods haven't had mortal offspring, but at least when the world is on the line, they can keep it in their pants, though Poseidon, that was a bit of a screw up on your part. Poseidon had the decency to look sheepish. Who are you calling a screw up, prick? came an angry voice and they all turned to see Percy Jackson, panting and pissed, glaring at Naruto. Oh, hey, you're okay, he said calmly. Percy walked forward and slapped the blonde on the back of the head. Ow, what the hell was that for? That's for throwing me off of Olympus, jerkweed. I could have been killed. Percy growled, and Naruto stood up, getting in the demigod's face. He word there being, could. You seem plenty safe to me, douchebag. You wanna go, mother. Bring it on, asswipe. 
Every person in the room sweat dropped at their performance as they stood chest to chest, nostrils flaring and eyes narrowed. Could you guys knock it off? Talia, daughter of Zeus, shouted at them. They both blinked and looked at her, surprised. They stepped away from each other, and Naruto scratched the back of his head sheepishly. Sorry for throwing you out, he said, holding out a hand. Percy took it a bit reluctantly. Yeah, sure, he replied suspiciously, and they shook. Naruto sat down again as Percy stepped back to the remainder of the crowd, still looking incensed. Anyway, where was I? The blonde asked, rubbing his eyelids. A bit of a screw up on Poseidon's part, Artemis said. Right, I'm glad that worked out, by the way. And speaking of which, he said. There's something I need all the gods to do. Why should we do anything for you? Zeus snarled. All you've done since you've arrived is insult and threaten us. Naruto blinked at the sheer idiocy of the god's statement. Most of the people around the room looked at Zeus, incredulous that he could be so ungrateful. I'm also the one who defeated both Typhon and Kronos, the blonde said, his voice quiet. You really do have an inflated sense of your own importance. I'm a god, Zeus yelled standing up again. I'm many times more powerful than you. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Says the one who was getting his ass kicked by a guy that was cut into a thousand pieces. And if we were going by levels of power, he began, slouching in his chair and picking his teeth. Well, imagine if a fly crawled up to your table and started to get snarky. Most of the occupants of the room gulped slightly. Zeus, however, was simply too far gone by now. I'm more important than you. I rule over this entire planet. Exactly, the blonde said. Everyone looked at him in confusion. You rule over this planet. This one, minuscule planet, in one tiny solar system, in a galaxy that's barely out of its diapers. Naruto glared at the king of the gods. I'm old, Zeus. Very, very, very old. So, I invite you to try to comprehend how insignificant I find you. Zeus was about to retort but Naruto sighed and rubbed the bridge of his nose. Look, we could trade insults until I grow old and die, which is unlikely, so I'll just lay it out for you. Currently, I'm in a bit of a predicament. Actually, I'm trapped. Everyone blinked in surprise. If you're so powerful, then how could you have been trapped? Athena asked, curious. I was taking a nap, Naruto said, scratching the back of his head sheepishly, causing the occupants of the room to face fault. Honestly, I'd gotten careless. Over three million years, give or take, had passed since I'd last been here, and I wasn't really expecting any trouble. Then his eyes narrowed. A bunch of guys trapped me inside of an egg and buried me, sealing almost all of my power away. An egg? Zeus asked contemptuously. Yes, an egg, Naruto said calmly, but everyone could tell that he was getting more and more annoyed with Zeus' attitude. So powerful, and yet you get stuck in an egg. Was it from a chicken or an ostrich? The king of the gods snorted. Naruto fixed him with a glare. Not quite. This egg happens to be 12 feet tall with alternating, foot-thick layers of diamond, adamant and titanium, then fixed with some of the most complex and dangerous power repressing seals known to man, Naruto said, his voice deathly quiet. Everyone gulped, and for once, Zeus was at a loss for words. And did I mention that this egg happens to be buried about 600 feet below the earth? He asked, and everyone shook their heads, trying to imagine what he was talking about. How long have you been there? Artemis asked, horrified. Well, I started around 30,000 years ago. And you haven't been up since. Athena wondered. Naruto's fists tightened. The descendants of the men who put me there guard me all the time. They keep me on a leash only letting me out when they want to destroy something. They fixed me with some pretty good seals, I can't get out of them or harm the men who use them. So I'm stuck doing their bidding. What do you mean? Hestia asked. He gave her a pained look. Let me put it this way. Last time they hauled me up, Noah was building a boat, he said, causing everyone's eyes to widen. Then his face wrinkled, like he'd just tasted something sour. You've got to get me out. Everyone raised an eyebrow. He seemed pretty desperate. Why? What's the matter? Athena asked. Inside the egg, it's too horrible to think about. What? Aphrodite questioned worriedly. Naruto looked like he was having a panic attack. It stinks. 
It smells like someone dropped a dead animal into a puddle of tar and lit it on fire. He said, making choking noises. Plus, there's a aftertaste like diesel. Like a diesel Y tinge, to it. Everyone's sweat dropped, and you think we can break you out? Zeus said, raising an eyebrow. There's you ridiculous bravado again, of course you can't. Naruto said, causing everyone to look at him, surprised. But you said, Apollo began, but was cut off. I said you could help me, but even all the gods together won't be able to break me out. The power repressing seals are too complex for that, and if it works on me, it'll work on you, the blonde said. However, you can help me take the bullets out of my captor's gun, so to speak. What do you mean? Athena asked. I mean, if you can kill the ones who are controlling me, then I can do the rest. And besides, he said, glaring at Zeus. I do believe that you owe me. Zeus fidgeted as all the gods looked at him. We do owe the guy one, Talia said to her father. Naruto looked over at her. Two, one and a half, she replied. They both blinked, then gave matching grins. This seems very familiar, Percy said, scratching the back of his head. So will you help? Naruto asked, looking around the room at the assembled gods. Artemis stood up. Even if the others won't, then I will, she said, giving him a slight nod, which he returned gratefully. Aphrodite stood up next. You saved my daughter, she said, smiling at him. I'll help too. As will I, Athena stated. After all, you did help us. It's only fair that we help you in return. I agree, Hestia said. Naruto looked around as each of the gods mumbled their consent, except for Zeus. Said god looked around at everyone who was staring at him expectantly. Oh, fine, he grumbled. Do what you want, but I'll have no part in it. As he finished, a clap of thunder sounded, and Zeus was gone. Naruto rolled his eyes. Geez, dramatic, much, he said, and several goddesses giggled. Then he clapped his hands and said in a happy voice. Okay. Who's up for some prison breaking? Nyahaha. Naruto cackled madly. I'm so excited. So you keep saying, Athena deadpanned. Hey, I have a perfectly legitimate reason. For talking incessantly on the way down. Exactly. Most of the gods in the elevator rolled their eyes at the blonde. Since their little talk in the gods' throne room, Naruto had been randomly breaking into giggles like a crazy person. He was currently surrounded by several goddesses, namely Athena. Aphrodite, Artemis and Hestia. The moon goddess, who was most annoyed with him, was one chuckle away from slapping him on the back of the head. Then, of course, he chuckled. Smack, ow, Naruto yelped, rubbing the back of his head and glaring at the moon goddess. She gave him a flat look. You sound like a mad fool. Stop chuckling. Meh, you're no fun, he said, but then started smiling again almost immediately causing the occupants of the elevator to roll their eyes for the second time. As they stepped out, the security guard looked up and nodded in their direction discreetly, though he did raise an eyebrow at the grinning blonde with them. Wow, that guy looks crazy, he thought, unaware that many people had thought the same thing recently. Naruto looked around the place, taking in the sights. He saw many things that were familiar to him, some that were different. He stopped by a lamp and peered at it with interest. Huh he said, causing the goddesses to stop around him. What is it? Hestia asked. You guys have fluorescent lighting. He said. Um, yes. Why? It's been a while since I've been here. There are so many new things. They all stepped outside, and Naruto blinked in surprise at the many tall buildings around him. He crouched slightly, gathering power in his legs, before jumping upwards, easily sailing past the top of several buildings to land lightly on the closest one, which gave him a decent view of the city. He looked out and sighed as the goddesses appeared behind him. Case in point, he said. This place has changed a lot over the years. Can't even see any stars. Artemis blinked in surprise at him, not expecting that last comment. What would a man like you care about the stars? She asked, and he raised an eyebrow. What? Just cause I'm a man, I automatically have to not care about nature. Who's being east now? She flushed angrily at his words. Men I've met seem to have a less than cordial relationship with nature, she fired back. And how many men have you actually met and or interacted with? He asked. 
Most of the men you've met are either A. Total assholes, B. Your family, some of whom fall into case A, or C. Just interested in getting in your pants. And which rank do you fall into? The moon goddess asked with more than a little anger. None, he replied, to which all of the goddesses raised an eyebrow. Really? Artemis asked skeptically. Yep, I'm most certainly not your family, though your family tree is so inconfusing it drives me nuts. And I like to think that I'm not a total asshole. Before he could continue, he was interrupted by Artemis. And you don't want to get into my pants. That's all men ever want, to ravage maidens and then leave them behind like a broken sandal. What makes you so different? She asked savagely. Most of the goddesses were surprised when Naruto merely blinked, not expecting the question. I'm not like that, he said. I'm a lot nicer than you'd believe. Oh, really? Artemis asked, still angry. All I see is an arrogant, insane, unintelligent fool who probably only wants to get out so he can take advantage of us. Naruto merely stood, his head edged to the side. Well, most of that was probably true, he said, surprising everyone. I can be pretty arrogant, I used to be insane and I'm not sure if I've recovered, and I'm most certainly unintelligent. Then his features hardened, but there is one thing I'll never do, and that is take advantage of a woman. They were all surprised at the vehemence in his voice. Artemis just stared at him for a few seconds, and, seeing the conviction in his eyes, gave a HMPH, and turned away, crossing her arms. He sighed and rubbed his temples. Did you say you used to be insane? Hestia asked, and Naruto looked at her, surprised. Well, yeah, of course. What, did you expect me to be of sound mind? Um, well, do any of you have any idea what it's like to be stuck inside a rotten egg for 30,000 years? It's boring, Naruto grunted sourly, then rubbed a spot on his back. Plus I've had a Charlie horse since the Middle Ages. Hestia coughed awkwardly and Aphrodite chuckled at the expression on Naruto's face. But you used to be. You're not insane right now. Nah, I grew out of it, he said, and the goddess is all deadpanned. How do you grow out of being insane? Naruto gave a chuckle at them before he turned serious again. Look, I if you don't want to help me, then that's fine. Just say so. He waited for a few seconds, and when no replies were forthcoming, he continued. But if you are, I need to let you know about a few things that you'll be dealing with. Athena, the strategist of the group, leaned forward a little to listen closely. Okay, so, these people that are holding me captive are inside a huge compound in Oregon. That's where we need to start. Oregon, Aphrodite asked, she wasn't expecting such an obvious location. Yeah, specifically under Crater Lake, the extinct volcano, Aphrodite asked, and the other goddesses looked at her in surprise. You know about that, Hestia asked, and the goddess of love seemed mildly offended. I do a little geography, you know. Do you think I spend all my time on my wardrobe? Yes, they all deadpanned, and Naruto gave a laugh. Well, how do you know about it? Athena asked, and Aphrodite's expression turned from crestfallen to swooning in a second. Crater Lake is one of the most beautiful places in the world, she said dreamily. More love is created there than in this entire city. I mean, it's practically oozing the stuff. That's not the only thing it's oozing, Naruto growled, crossing his arms and muttering incoherently to himself. What are you on about? Artemis asked, and the blonde sighed slowly, before rubbing the back of his head. Sorry, I just get pretty upset when I think about it he replied, and then he ground his teeth slightly. Ungrateful, conniving, power-hungry bastards. Excuse me, Athena asked, looking offended. Not you, Naruto replied hurriedly. I'm talking about the people who imprisoned me. This brought about another round of angry muttering. There were raised eyebrows all around at the blonde, but before anyone could comment, Naruto perked up, looking down at the street below. Huh, he said. That little sea urchin seems a bit upset. What? Most of the occupants of the rooftop walked forward a little to see what Naruto was looking at. Down below, Percy was having a rather heated discussion with some of his friends. As they watched, he ran towards the edge of the river, and pretty soon, several shapes appeared in the surf. What are they? Naruto asked, scratching his head in confusion at the beautiful animals in the water below. They're called hippocampi, Athena said. 
some of the most beautiful creatures in the world. Huh, Naruto deadpanned, they're fish ponies, don't be so rude, Aphrodite said with annoyance, he looked up at her, blinking. Yeah but, they're fish ponies. The goddess of love, normally used to people respecting the beauty and things, couldn't help but cross her arms and pout. There they go, Naruto said, watching as the three shapes swam off with the speed of jet skis. Who wants to follow him? I thought you said that you wanted to get free, Hestia asked, slightly confused. Well, yeah, but I've been waiting for a few thousand years, I can wait for another couple minutes. With that, he jumped off the building, whooping as he soared through the air. The four behind him were torn between annoyance and amusement at his childishness. Minutes later, Percy stood before Rachel Elizabeth Dare as he tried to talk her out of her chosen path. Sorry, Percy, she said with a sad smile. I'm meant to do this, I know I am. But what if Hades hasn't lifted the curse yet? You could go insane. That's a risk I'm willing to take, she said as she walked forward into the camp big house. Before he could say anything else, a cheerful voice sounded from behind him. What's happening here? Sounds exciting. Many of the campers turned around to look at the mysterious man who'd most likely saved all of their lives. Behind him, four goddesses appeared, looking slightly out of breath, causing many campers to kneel. Percy however, wasn't having such a good time. You, go in there and get her out. He practically shouted at the blonde, who blinked. Huh, nearly tearing his hair out in frustration, the black-haired boy elaborated. Rachel, she's in the big house trying to become the oracle, but if it fails, she could go insane. That's not necessary, Percy, came another voice from behind him, this one belonging to Apollo. Rachel will be fine. How do you know? Apollo raised an eyebrow. Hello, God of Prophecy standing here. Ah, crap, Naruto suddenly cried out, holding his sleeve up to his nose, and the people around him gave him questioning looks. Something smells like rotting snakes. What the hell is that? His question was answered as the door to the big house opened, a green mist pouring through. Naruto coughed violently. The smell was nasty, especially around the figure that the mist was issuing from. Rachel stepped out of the large building, her eyes glowing green, as she looked around at the assembled campers and gods, and finally stared at the blonde man. Geez, could you tone it down a little? Naruto shouted, which turned out to be a mistake, as he inhaled even more of the smoke. Gagging, he tried desperately not to throw up, and was immediately grateful when the mist receded somewhat. Then, Rachel looked over at the group of goddesses, and opened her mouth. A harsh, raspy voice sounded out, carrying the weight of thousands of years behind it. Approach, seekers, and ask, she said, and they all blinked. You mean, all of us? Athena asked, clearly confused. She'd never heard of a prophecy being about more than one person, let alone about gods. The oracle gave a short nod, and she gulped, looking around at the other three, who were just as confused. Um, what is our prophecy? She asked lamely, and the oracle's smoke began to solidify, until it took an image that surprised everyone. It was Naruto, or at least, an image of him. The look-alike opened his mouth, and in the same voice as the oracle, began to speak. Night will fall and drown the sun. Good men rise while demons run. Friendship dies and true love lies. Night will fall and the dark will rise. Demons run but count the cost. The bottles won but the child is lost. A man and a beast, above, beneath. One has a smile and one has teeth. While the man above might say hello. Expect no love from the beast below. With those final words, the Naruto look-alike fell silent, gave one look at the original who was gazing at him thoughtfully, before fading back into smoke, which itself began to recede into Rachel. As the last of it began to fade, she closed her eyes and slumped tiredly, about to fall over. Before she could, Naruto rushed forward and put an arm around her shoulder, steadying her. You know something I just realized, he said with seriousness, and everyone gulped at what his reaction would be. Then he gave a big smile. I really am ruggedly handsome, aren't I? Everyone face faulted. Even Hestia, normally the quiet voice of reason, couldn't help but sigh at his sheer, carelessness. Are you for real? Percy asked. That was easily the scariest prophecy I've ever heard, and I've heard some that would give people nightmares. 
You kidding. Aside from the nasty smelling smoke, that was awesome. You never take a prophecy lightly, especially not one like that. Meh. Prophecy. I emit a noxious effluvium in prophecy's general direction. I'm surrounded by idiots, Artemis groused, causing two voices to say, Hey. Everyone quieted as Rachel began to stir, still being held by Naruto. As she opened her eyes, she caught sight of the handsome blonde man holding her up, and her cheeks darkened slightly. Um, what happened? She asked. Well, you kinda spewed green smoke and said a rhyme, Naruto answered bluntly, and everyone face palmed. For the love of, Athena said, he's such a, Aphrodite groaned. Rachel blushed harder, but his next words cut her off. It was so cool. She blinked. Really? Well, the smoke smelled kinda funky, but other than that, it was totally awesome. His point was somewhat ruined when he turned away and belched out a sizable cloud of green mist. Hey, sorry. Um, no problem, she said, clearly unsure of how to respond. Can you stand? He asked, and she blushed even harder as she realized that she'd been unconsciously leaning into his warm and very muscular body. Yeah, she said, stepping away from him with only a hint of reluctance. I think that it's time you explain some things to us, brother. Artemis said with a glare at the sun god, who was caught off guard at her sudden question. Uh, what? Don't play dumb with me, no matter how easy it is, she growled at him, and Naruto laughed. Ha ha, good one, he said with glee at the offended look on Apollo's face. That's so rude, little sis. I'm not that stupid. You barely even have a brain, you great big ball of gas. And for the five millionth time, I am not your, little, sister. Apollo recoiled slightly at his sibling's anger. I have a brain, he murmured quietly. I just don't use it much. By now, Naruto was literally rolling on the ground with laughter, struggling to draw breath at the hilarious display before him. Finally managing to recover after a few seconds, he wiped a few tears of mirth from his eyes as he continued to chuckle. Oh, man, I haven't had a laugh this good since I hung out with Pan. A full five seconds of silence followed his statement. At this point, practically nothing surprises me anymore, Athena said tiredly. A dozen nature spirits, satyrs and nymphs alike, approached the man on the ground almost reverently. You've met Pan, they all clamored, and he gave a huge grin. Oh man, Pan was awesome. I met him when I was exploring, he and I had so much fun together. We sang drank and danced like idiots all over the place, and we loved it. Wait a minute, Aphrodite said, if you met Pan, why haven't we seen you sooner? He was a god, he should have told us. There were a few reasons for that, Naruto said. For one, I was almost as weak as an average human, but the real reason he didn't tell you was because I asked him not to. Why, didn't you want to get free? Hestia asked, confused, even though Athena immediately saw the wisdom of his actions. You did want to get free, she said quietly. You just couldn't trust us to help you. Exactly, he said sadly. I had watched the gods for centuries. I knew that if I tried to present my case to Zeus, he would shoot it down, or even likelier, shoot me down. And that was something I couldn't afford. I'd spent too much effort into finding a way to communicate with the outside world, I wasn't about to risk screwing it up. Everyone around was quiet as they tried to absorb that information. Finally Artemis broke the silence. That's another thing I've been meaning to ask you, she said. How are you even speaking to us? If your physical body is 600 feet below the ground, how are you here? Naruto seemed to sag slightly as the question was posed to him, and for the first time, the people around him got a little glimpse of how miserable he was. More by sheer dumb luck, really, he said with a morose laugh. I don't think you would be interested. On the contrary, the moon goddess said, not seeming to notice how sullen he had become. I'm quite interested. Artemis, let it go, Aphrodite whispered quietly, causing all the goddesses to look at her in surprise, she seemed worried. They were right, she could feel the raw emotions brewing beneath Naruto's relatively calm exterior, and knew that pushing him was a very bad idea. Before anyone could say anything, Naruto made a hand sign and a small leaning chair made of wood pushed itself out of the ground, right under him, and he settled down, sighing. All right, I'll tell you, he said, to the surprise of many. 
It was pretty much an accident anyway. He seemed to collect himself and began his story. Does anyone know the origin of Crater Lake? He asked, and several people nodded. It used to be an active volcano called MT. Mazama, said a girl with blonde hair and gray eyes. Point for the lady. That's correct, he said. Well, truth is, that's where my prison got dropped into. A volcano? Hestia asked incredulously. Yeah, the guys who imprisoned me needed a fast and easy way to get me out of the way, and digging a big asshole didn't seem like a very good idea, so they did the next best thing. They shoved my prison into MT. Mazama, probably the biggest volcano on the planet. Aren't there bigger ones under the sea? Why didn't they just put you there? Athena asked. Not so easy to do. They needed to build a base to monitor and siphon off my power, and it's a lot harder to do that on the water, especially since they needed to be pretty close to me to do it. So they put me there close to 30,000 years ago, shoving me into a prison and letting me sink deeper and deeper into the earth, going with the lava flow. A weight seemed to drop onto his shoulders, all the people listening to his story could actually see how tired he was, not physically, but mentally. And then, around 5700 BC, they brought me up. For a little while, I actually thought that they might have changed, that I might have a chance at freedom. Then his eyes darkened, but that's not what happened. They gave me an order, one that I couldn't refuse. What was it? Athena asked, almost afraid of the answer. They told me to flood the entire planet. Everyone gasped, even some of the gods. They stared at the man before them with wonder, and just a hint of fear. But you have to understand, he said. I never wanted to do it. Before they made me, I sent out a physic warning across the planet. Warning anyone who was listening of what was coming, asking them to prepare themselves. Most people heard it, some chose to ignore it, others didn't. Once I was done, they shoved me back into my prison. And that's where things get even more violent. When they put me back, how do you think I felt? Quote dot dot dot, angry, Hestia asked hesitantly. Naruto gave a sardonic laugh. Angry, angry doesn't even begin to cover it. Try murderous. Everyone gulped as Naruto stood up and walked over to the railing overlooking the ocean, sighing. I was the one who caused MT. Mazama to explode, he said quietly. What? Athena gasped. How? Ever heard the saying? Anger is a powerful force. Yes. Well in my case, it's quite literal. When I get angry, bad things happen, and at that moment, I was absolutely furious. The volcano had already been stressed. It would have blown up sooner or later, I just provided the last push. Naruto sighed. He seemed more and more exhausted with every word he said. And that's part of how I'm talking to you today, he said. In the aftermath of the explosion, the crater slowly filled up with rainwater until it was a lake. There were only a few people who ever approached it. The Klamath Native Americans believed it to be inhabited by the god of the underworld, Yao. So, only people who were strong spiritually approached it. One of them died, and sunk down into the bottom of the lake. Naruto chuckled. By sheer chance, his body went down into the lava flow and most of it disintegrated, but enough managed to get down to me for me to make a path. That's what this body is. A path, a body that I could control from a distance as if it were my own, Naruto elaborated, raising his shirt to show several black spikes in his body though most of the girls weren't as occupied by those. These are what I used to control it from afar. It was the only option available to me, I couldn't make a shadow clone that would last long enough. Over the next few hundred years, I managed to shove the body upwards, a few inches at a time, until I was finally somewhat free. Why? Aphrodite asked. He looked her, surprised. What do you mean? Why did those, monsters, want to flood the world? Kill thousands. More like millions, Naruto growled. And to answer your question, for fun. What? Came the response from many. The blonde merely grit his teeth. That's why I want to get free not just because of what's happening to me, but for all the people those bastards made me kill. They deserve justice. His voice deepened, becoming lower and angrier. And I deserve vengeance. Silence flowed for a few seconds, and Naruto gave a sigh, releasing a little bit of tension. Okay. Everyone looked at the source of the voice, and were surprised to see Artemis looking at the blonde thoughtfully. All help. 
You're right in that the people that died deserve justice. Then her eyes narrowed, but I'll help for them, not for you. Because, in all honesty, I don't trust you. She walked off, leaving many surprised people behind, including but not limited to the three other goddesses. I'll go too, said Clarice, who had recently arrived, in time to hear Naruto's story. And me, Aphrodite said, giving a smile to the blonde, who returned it tiredly. I will as well, Athena said. Hestia didn't say anything, just gave Naruto a small nod and a smile. Well, awesome, Naruto laughed, I'm gonna get free. Naruto whistled a jaunty tune as he sat upon the roof of the big house. It was nearly sunset. The last rays from the glowing orb were vanishing over the hills. Already, shadows were lengthening across the valley of Camp Half-Blood, covering most of it with darkness. To most other beings, this would probably somewhat scary, but not for him. He'd always been comfortable in the dark. He looked up at the twinkling pinpricks of light in the sky and closed his eyes. He could feel everything, the sweat on the brow of some unfortunate Ares camper as he tried to scale the climbing wall the hairs rising on the back of an undetermined camper's neck as he heard an eerie sound from the woods, the microscopic ripples of water as a naiad drifted through the lake. He could feel everything, he always felt everything. Having fun, came a female voice, and he leaned back to see Artemis standing above him. Always, are they ready? Not yet, they were talking about the others, gods and demigods alike, who were planning to come with him to Crater Lake. Suddenly, Naruto let out a laugh, causing Artemis to look at him strangely. What's so funny? Nothing, really, I'm just happy, he said. The moon goddess gazed at him oddly, and she did notice that he was smiling softly, looking out at the horizon. His purple rippled eyes seemed to glow as he let go of the breath he was holding. He seemed so, peaceful. Feeling her attentive gaze on him, he glanced over. What, is there something on my face? Artemis blushed as she realized that she'd been caught staring, and shook her head. No, there isn't, really, because you can tell me. Is it a spider? Is it a fly? He said it in such a scared voice that she rolled her eyes. More powerful than Zeus, and he's scared of a fly. What? Flies are terrifying. It's an insect. Act your age, why don't you? That got boring a long time ago. Resisting the urge to strangle the blonde, Artemis settled for shaking her head. Are you two having fun? They both turned to see Aphrodite smirking at them, standing with her arms crossed. Don't know what you mean, Artemis said coolly. The goddess of love raised an eyebrow. Oh, really? She asked. They were interrupted as Naruto lay down with a pout, his arms stretched out. When are they gonna be ready? I'm bored. You seem to get bored a lot. Do I? I shouldn't be bored. Why am I bored? Only boring people get bored. I'm not boring, everything about me absolutely oozes, not boring. Then why are you bored? For the first time in a long, long time, Naruto was speechless, as he realized that Artemis had won the verbal argument. Well, that's not, I, he stuttered as he tried to come up with a response. The moon goddess smirked slightly, then raised an eyebrow when Naruto muttered something that was almost too quiet for her to hear. Annoying little bacterium, aren't you? He grumbled, then he immediately smacked himself across the face. Shut up, that's rude. Um, are you alright? Aphrodite asked, fine, well, sort of. What's the matter? Shinju is being annoying, he said, then winced as a sharp headache struck him. Ow, damn it, shut up, you totally are, you asshole. Ow, I don't even know how I stand you. As Naruto was having his private conversation, the campers who were coming with them gathered at the foot of the big house. Mom, we're here, Selina yelled up at them. We'll be just a second, Aphrodite replied, staring at the blonde, who was now punching himself in the stomach violently. Ow, 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 damn it, now you've made me hurt my hand, pasta tails. A short pause, what the hell do you mean, it's my own damn fault. Um, excuse me, the love goddess interrupted, causing Naruto to look over at her. Are you finished, or do you need some alone time? The blonde blinked. No, I'm fine, he said, paused, then sighed. Yes, moron, I know she's hot, but don't think that I'm letting you out. Remember last time. Aphrodite blushed at the blonde's comment, 
even as he kept talking. What? No, that was totally your fault. Now stow your crap, before I put you back in your cage. Oh, destroyer of worlds my ass, I can still kick the crap out of you. I've done it before, haven't I? And yes, I still think your tails look like pasta. Now shut up, I'm trying to concentrate here. He huffed as the annoying creature in stomach fell silent, then jumped off the roof of the big house, landing in front of several campers, who drew back involuntarily as the ground cracked under his feet. So, is this everyone? He asked, looking around at the small group, which consisted of Selena, Clarice, Talia, Percy, Annabeth and Nico. They all nodded. Where are we going again? Percy asked, scratching his head. Crater Lake, Seaweed Brain, Annabeth replied, punching him on the shoulder affectionately. Most of the others smiled as Percy rubbed his arm, struggling but not quite succeeding to look angry. All right, everyone, listen up, Naruto said. Everyone stood a little straighter as he eyed them, taking in their nervous expressions. What, I'm not going to disintegrate you. Relax. Of course, this had the opposite effect of what he hoped, as they stood even more stiffly. Naruto frowned for a second, then sighed. All right, this clearly isn't going to work. Everyone sit down. All of the demigods blinked. Um, where? Talia asked. Naruto merely smiled, then snapped his fingers. Everyone in the group was suddenly pushed off their feet to land on comfortable wooden chairs that grew out of the ground beneath them. Geez, a little warning next time, Aphrodite said irritably. Sorry, he replied, not sounding apologetic at all, and sat down in his own chair. All right, if this little group is gonna work, we need to get to know each other. What do you mean? I mean name or title, likes, dislikes, dreams, abilities. If we're going to be a team, we should start acting like it. Most of the people around blinked in surprise. We're going to be a team. Annabeth asked, surprised. Well, yeah, if I'm going to make a plan of attack, I need to know what I have to attack with, he said, then shrugged. Basic strategy. Both Annabeth and Athena stirred a little with interest at his words. Honestly, they were used to being the strategists for their own communities, and to see someone else do so was interesting, to say the least. Anyway, who'd like to go first? He asked. Most of the group blinked, before Annabeth raised her hand timidly. You're kidding me with that, right? She hurriedly put it down, and asked, Well, why don't you give us an example? Naruto blinked, then scratched his head thoughtfully. Why does this seem so familiar? He asked, then shrugged. All right, I guess I'll go first. My name is Naruto. I have a bunch of very long, very boring titles. I like ramen, running, traveling, hunting, reading, carving, forging and watching the stars. The group stirred with interest as the blonde began speaking. They'd all been curious about this mysterious person who'd possibly saved all their lives. I dislike arrogant people, those who judge books by the cover, here, he gave a small sidelong glance at Artemis, who huffed and turned away. And the, he paused for a second, struggling to get the words out, in time it takes for ramen to heat up. My dreams, well, probably to get free in the next 24 hours. Other than that, I don't know. As for my abilities, well, with my main body I can pretty much do anything. With this weaker one though, I have better senses than any animal, I'm stronger than an elephant and faster than a race car. So basically, I'm awesome. The group blinked at Naruto's assessment of his own skills, and Artemis, predictably, snorted with contempt. Of course you do, should we not bow before your greatness, O oh mighty one? No way, he said vehemently, surprising everyone. That's the one thing I don't want. No one should ever bow to me. Everyone blinked. The demigods were stunned that a guy who claimed to be more powerful than any god didn't want to be shown respect. Wow, and why not, might I ask? It makes me feel old. Artemis gave him a flat look. You are old, and you're ugly. Excuse me. Anyway, who's next? He looked around at the group, ignoring her furious glare. They all seemed collectively disinterested in being looked at. Slowly, Athena raised her hand. All right, your turn, Athena. Naruto said, putting both hands behind his head. Um, all right, the goddess replied, taking a second to collect herself. This was surprising for the other goddesses, 
though they didn't let it show. She'd had always been calm and composed, but now, she seemed almost, flustered. My name is Athena, goddess of wisdom and battle. I like reading, writing, art, music and weaving. I dislike spiders and those who take knowledge for granted. My dream, I'm not sure. As for my abilities, I am a master strategist and I wield a spear, sword and shield. I am confident in my own skills. She looked around, taking in many expression, ranging from admiration to interest. When she finally arrived at Naruto, she was surprised to see that he was looking at her with a big smile on his face. Awesome, sounds like you kick ass, he said, and Athena blinked in surprise at the compliment. Anyway, who's next? I'll go, Aphrodite said cheerfully. My name is Aphrodite, goddess of love. I like shopping, music, trying on clothes, visiting beautiful places, and... Here she was interrupted as every male in the group except one simultaneously blushed scarlet. The other demigods and goddesses all face pomp. Mom, Selena said, scandalized. Oh gods, Artemis muttered, her cheeks slightly pink from the image in her head. Naruto meanwhile, merely pinched the bridge of his nose and sighed. Doesn't even try to hide it. But anyway, I dislike people who don't appreciate beauty, prudes, and my husband. She was interrupted again as Naruto raised a hand and ran it through his hair, muttering with his eyes closed. Oh, for crying out loud. The goddess of love looked over at him, eyebrow raised, as the rest of the group looked between the two awkwardly. Aphrodite's lack of marital relations with her husband were legendary on Olympus, as was her frequent trysts with mortals. She looked at him, a confused expression on her beautiful face. What's the matter, later? Okay, well, anyway, my dream is, probably to find someone who can satisfy me. What do you mean, someone who can my brains out? Mom, have you no shame, troublesome? Anyway, I can charm anyone with my voice, and I'm fairly handy with knives. As she paused her speech, she finally looked around at the gathering before realizing that everyone was a shade of red that was pressing the limits of good health, and blinked slowly. Is something the matter, later? That's the second time you've said that. I happen to notice, thank you. She peered at Naruto oddly, though he just massaged his temples and sighed. Next person, he asked, and Hestia slowly raised her hand. You go ahead. My name is Hestia, goddess of the hearth. I enjoy reading, quiet places and tending my fire. I don't like it when my siblings argue. My dream, I'll keep that private. I have moderate control over fire and use an iron staff in combat. Sounds good, who's next? How about some demigods? He gave a pointed look at Percy, who blanched a little at the attention. Um, okay, well, my name is Percy Jackson, son of Poseidon, god of the sea. I like swimming, canoeing, capture the flag, gum, basketball and, here he blushed bright red as he took a fleeting look at Annabeth, whose cheeks flushed slightly as well. You like what? Athena asked, a stern look on her face. I didn't hear you. Don't bully the poor kids, Naruto said with amusement. I think they're cute together. The goddess of wisdom looked at him with a hint of anger, while her daughter looked surprised. How did you know we were? She began, but, seeing a very nasty light in her mother's eyes, didn't finish the sentence. Naruto merely gave a chuckle. Please, I've been doing this a lot longer than any of you. I know how to spot two people who are hopelessly in love with each other. Cue two red-faced children and one furious mother. Don't look so upset, Athena, Naruto chided. You can't control how people feel. But we're getting off topic. He looked back at Percy. Keep going, kid. Right, he said, coughing at the evil eye Athena was giving him. I don't like dry places, storms are flying. My dream is, I don't know, probably some peace and quiet, and for gods not to kill me if I look at them wrong. He blushed as he realized that he'd said that out loud, and a quick glance at most of the gods present told him they weren't exactly pleased to hear him say that either. Naruto, of course, just looked amused. Er, anyway, I can control water pretty well, I'm good with a sword, and I'm currently mostly invulnerable. Curse of Achilles, huh? Naruto asked and everyone looked at him sharply, wondering how he knew. What, I know stuff, unlike what some people think, I'm not a complete moron. He made a point of not looking at Artemis as he said that. 
Next. I'll go, Talia said with a grin. My name's Talia, daughter of Zeus, god of the sky and currently a hunter of Artemis. I like killing monsters, camping, my sisters and my friends. I don't like water, small spaces, or heights. Here, Percy and Naruto both let out small snickers, and she glared at them balefully. And I particularly dislike annoying boys. My dream is to continue to serve my lady Artemis. I can control electricity and use my spear and shield in a fight. Naruto smiled. Girl who can kick any boy's ass, huh? Damn straight. Good for you, he said and Talia looked at him, surprised, but he'd already turned to the group. Next. I'll go, Nico muttered. My name is Nico D'Angelo, son of Hades, god of the underworld. I like reading, collecting stones, finding ancient bones and putting spirits to rest. I don't like obnoxious ghosts, people who don't pay respect to the dead and I also don't particularly like my stepmother, he was interrupted as every flower around his feet simultaneously leapt up and tried to strangle him with their stems. Naruto just sighed and snapped his fingers. The flowers fell back to the ground, unmoving. Please continue. Stunned at how easily Naruto had overpowered another god, even a minor one, the group just gaped for a few seconds, before Nico managed to close his mouth. You um, well, I'm not sure what my dream is, but I use my sword and power over the dead in battle. Ooh, that would be useful. Naruto said excitedly, can you choose who you bring back? No, unfortunately, my father can, but my reach doesn't extend that far. I can only choose people of a class, like US. Army or Spartan warriors, things like that. Still useful. Anyway, who's next? I'll go, Annabeth said excitedly. My name is Annabeth Chase, daughter of Athena, goddess of. Yes, we know who I am, dear. I already introduced myself, remember? Blushing, the girl stuttered for a minute before managing to get over her embarrassment. Naruto. Talia and Nico looking like they was about to burst out laughing didn't help, though Percy wisely kept his amusement hidden. Well, I like architecture, books and inventing. I don't like small spaces and I hate spiders, she said, shuddering. My dream is to finish my work on the architecture of Olympus. I use my knife in combat and I'm pretty good with strategy. While Athena looked at her daughter with pride and Percy with affection, Naruto just smiled. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Me too, Percy said dreamily, though he blushed when Naruto burst out laughing. If you're quite done, Artemis said balefully to Naruto who was still chuckling. I believe it's my turn. Finished laughing, he simply nodded. Right, sorry, continue, please. Raising an eyebrow at his sudden contriteness, she simply gave an unladylike snort. Very well, my name is Artemis, goddess of the moon and the hunt. I enjoy training with my hunters, killing monsters and wood carving. I dislike corrupted girls and arrogant men. Predictably, she gave a glare to a certain blonde as she said this, who merely stuck his tongue out at her. My dream is private, I use my bow and hunting knives in combat. Naruto gave a small smile and stood up. All right, now that the storytelling's done, let's go. He snapped his fingers, and they all fell on their butts as they suddenly appeared in the middle of a forest absent the wooden chairs they'd been sitting on. Geez, a little warning next time, Percy groused. Don't get snippy with me, moron, Naruto replied. If you can think of a faster way to travel, let me know. Where are we? Annabeth asked, looking around. Utah, Naruto answered and their eyes boggled at him. Be but not even shadow travel is that fast, Nico said. The god's top speed isn't that fast, Hestia muttered. Naruto sighed, and that's another problem with you guys. You have the power, just lack the imagination, he said. To do what? Athena asked, intrigued. Punch a hole through space to get to where you want quickly, he said calmly. Allows for instantaneous travel. My great-grand-uncle figured it out years before I was born. Then my mom rediscovered it, and was kind enough to share the technique with my dad. He was made famous for it. B but you said you were thousands of years old. No civilization on earth has ever had that kind of knowledge. Annabeth said, freaking out. No human has ever discovered how to do that. She was stopped from having a total panic attack when Naruto laughed and patted her shoulder. My dear Annabeth, he said with a grin. 
Whatever gave you the impression that I was human? Walking away from the shocked group, he looked around slightly. Was it this way? What are you looking for? Hestia asked, not really surprised. No regular human could challenge the gods, no matter how powerful they were. Wondering where Crater Lake is, he said. We're about an hour away, I made sure of it. But I may have, uh, messed up a little. She raised an eyebrow. Messed up. He rubbed the back of his neck sheepishly. Eh, hey, yeah, I may have gotten the coordinates wrong, so I don't really remember which side of Crater Lake we're on. Couldn't you just look for the source of your power? He blinked a few times, then a disarmingly bright smile stretched over his face as he swept up the startled goddess in a hug. Ha ha, you're brilliant, he laughed, dancing around for a little, before Hestia finally knocked him over the head with her staff. Getting up from the ground just as cheerfully as he'd gone down, he started walking. Still say you're brilliant, Hestia blushed and followed along with a frown. Why are we out here? Why didn't you just transport us directly to Crater Lake? Aphrodite asked. He grinned. Well, I figured that you'd have some questions. Feel free to ask. Immediately, Annabeth hopped forward and started bombarding Naruto with questions. How powerful are you? Where did you come from? What did you mean when you said you recreated Earth? Why? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Naruto said, holding up his hands. Geez, give me a little room to answer if you're gonna ask. The daughter of Athena looked crestfallen, and nodded hurriedly as she realized that what she'd done might be considered disrespectful. Naruto's eyes narrowed as he looked at the play of emotions on her face, and sighed. Oh, don't look so worried. I'm not like Bigasus up there who'll kill you for snoring too loud. Say whatever you like about me, I don't give a crap. Percy had to suppress a snort at Naruto's unofficial nickname for Zeus, while Annabeth gave a half-hearted smile. I might have to take you up on that, Percy said with narrowed eyes. After all, what kind of a moron would throw a kid off a 600-story mountain in the sky? You're still angry about that? The blonde asked. Geez. I'd forgotten that it even happened. Forgotten, Percy said faintly, his eyebrow twitching. You idiot, I could have been killed. You could have killed me. Meh, you seem fine. Fine, you scared the crap out of me. If I hadn't landed in the East River. Ah, but I seem to recall you did. You landed exactly where I threw you, so why are you complaining? Doesn't make you any less of an asshole. This too, you jerk. I know all about your affinity for water and that you'd survive if I threw you down to a river. And what if you'd missed? I could have died, and yet here you stand. Don't be upset that you're still alive. Shut it, Annabeth shouted, causing them both to swivel in surprise. We still have to get to Crater Lake, you idiots. So stop arguing and start walking. Percy and Naruto stood at attention and snapped off salutes. Sir, yes sir. They sped off and the group looked back at Annabeth with surprise and a hint of admiration. Well done, dear, Athena said with a smile, causing her daughter to blush. Naruto's annoyed voice sounded from the trees. Come on, people, don't have all day. We have an awesome guy to save. Artemis sighed tiredly. Why in Hades did I agree to this again? The end. Now we will see you in the next video.